hi welcome back to my video um i'm just excited for today's video um i'm trying to get this uh channel going with a lot of videos or at least try to um and today i might record a couple of other videos i'm not sure so if you'll be seeing me in the same outfit slash ha same hairdo then that's why so anyways today's topic on this video is going to be my ranking of the Halloween franchise which I'm excited about because it is the spooky season it is Halloween time I love this franchise I want to say that between this franchise Halloween and Scream they are tied for first place for my favorite Halloween horror or not yeah well Halloween literally is the name of this franchise but like my favorite horror franchise but it definitely is a tie between Halloween and um, Scream. But I would say the others in, you know, the common thread that everyone likes, like Freddy and Jason and Chucky and stuff, I like those two. I would say probably my next favorite would probably be probably Freddy Krueger with Nightmare on Elm Street. And I would say maybe Chucky and then not saying that Jason's bad it's just you know out of all of them he's going to be last for me like I like his movies and I, I and it's so funny kind of side note his um what is it uh Freddy X or something the one that goes to space I think that one that's actually one of my favorite Freddy ones it's so weird because it seems to be one of the uh bad movies but anyway I'm going off topic and I want to make these these videos rather short so anyways I'm going to start my ranking on the Halloween franchise and number 13 I think is this one is going to be resurrection and I think that with resurrection this one is definitely one that is always at the bottom or at least mostly at the bottom like the very dead last at least in the videos I've seen, it seems like Resurrection is always like number 13 or dead last or whatever. But now that with Halloween ends, it's a tie between Resurrection and ends as being last. So maybe Resurrection won't necessarily be dead last anymore. But anyway, everyone knows with that one, it's just iconic for being bad in the sense that it killed off Laurie, Laurie Strode in the like first 10 minutes and of course I can't even remember his name because I'm like um, I'm not that big of a fan sorry gotta love cars um, but anyway um, him uh, when I mean him I'm not talking about Michael Myers even though I wouldn't even call this a Halloween movie because it, who the Michael who the Michael was Michael in this movie like seriously like, it doesn't even seem like it was a Michael Myers movie. Like, seriously, it doesn't. Like, because I'm like, what? You're just going to let... I'm just going to call him Freddy. Like, uh, the character. The name of the guy that, you know, shocks him and electric, electri electrified him in the ball. So, anyway, um, I'm just going to call by his character name because I forgot his real name. I know, I'm bad. But anyway, Freddy talking to him like that, Michael Myers like that. Like, usually, Michael Myers would be like choking him or stabbing him before he even finishes that sentence so I'm like eh, whatever so um yeah resurrection I think will for the most part always stay at the bottom for me unless I decide to readjust this ranking or or it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when we have more in this franchise because I'm sure we will whether it be another movie or a, a tv show but I think that even though I don't think I would like to have a TV series but um, I think it's one of the few that didn't get a TV series because you know um, did did Nightmare on Elm Street get it yeah I think yeah Nightmare on Elm Street got a series I'm not sure if Jason got one but Scream got one so yeah it is probably kind of overdue to have Halloween to have a, a TV series. Anyway, number 12 is going to be Curse. The Curse of Michael Myers. 
And I think that this one is kind of one of those ones that is also um, near the bottom. Not bottom, bottom, but like near the bottom of everyone's ranking. Not a lot of people like this one. There are people who do like it, especially since we all know that there is two copies or two different versions of this one, the director's and producer's cut. I don't know if I've seen one cut more than the other, and I don't know if that really would change my opinion all that much because both kind of don't really change the outcome. But anyway, the only redeeming thing I like about Curse is Paul Rudd. Yes, it was his very first film, and yes, he wasn't the best actor than me. He grew up on us, but he is just a, one of my favorite actors. So anyway, um, that was the redeeming quality. That's why it's not dead last. But I just didn't like the whole, you know, curse of thorn thing. And I know that started pretty much in 4, technically, because you saw the tattoo in 4. And then, of course, 5. But anyway, uh, I just didn't like that whole concept of somebody, like, uh, we are, yeah, we already know, like, Michael Myers, but that's, like, the, we already know that Michael Myers is human, but, like, there's that mystery to him. But having this curse to him, it doesn't give him that mystery anymore. Like, it just doesn't add to the story. It just... It's kind of like we're in with, Rob, with what Rob Zombie tried to do, you know, trying to make it, you know, something different and have like an explana explanation to it. I can't talk today, I'm sorry. But anyway, I liked it fine, like I said, and I'm not saying that the acting was terrible, but um, I thought that it was okay, better than some of the other acting in this franchise like I'm talking about you resurrection but anyway um I liked curse enough but not enough to have be higher um kind of going back to Rob Zombie my number 11 is actually Rob Zombie's one Rob Zombie's Halloween one um just because I and I know that the first I'm giving it too much crap because of the first 20 minutes of this movie. It's just the first 20 minutes of this was so insufferable with the whole stepdad being all, I'm not saying I'm like one of those like, oh my gosh, why are you doing that? I'm not like a snob or like who doesn't like swearing and stuff like that. I swear sometimes, but I just don't like, like seriously, you're yelling and like you're a creep. And so, and I don't think that adds to the movie. It doesn't add, like, what is, where's the Michael Myers in that? And then on top of that, it's giving Rob Zombie, and I know that he got permission from John Carpenter to make it his own. And I know that this was his way of trying to make it his, make it his own, but it's just, he's turning it into another, um, human aspect of him just being a serial killer like seriously like we already know that he yes he technically is a serial killer but like in the same sense of like Ed Gein or um um all the other famous serial killers it's like you're not making it original by just throwing him being in a um, serial killer famous making him you know what I mean and then, um, yeah, so I just didn't like that aspect of giving him more of a human quality when the whole character of Michael Myers is, he's human, yes, but is he really? Like, he must be like a strong human because he, it gives a, a, you a hint of supernatural, but this just gives you none of that but anyway our my number 10 now is actually rob zombies halloween 2 and you're thinking what halloween rob zombies halloween 2 is a crap but i do like it a little bit better yes there's still screaming and yelling especially again this one has like the director's cut and the theatrical cut two different versions similar to curse so 
it depends on what you do, but a lot of people tend to kind of like curses to cuts. Um, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, the director's cut, for this most part, people have like a love-hate relationship when it comes to there's one aspect and I don't want to say it or at least I want to say there's a certain scene near the beginning that is, if you've seen the movie, you know. If you know, you know. And it just didn't need to happen. Kind of just like at the beginning of the first Rob Zombie's Halloween that you didn't need the 20 minutes of the family dynamic of them screaming at each other. Like it doesn't add to the plot, you know. And seriously, same thing with that. It doesn't add to the plot. Like, seriously. And the, and, and, and then and Cujo to Michael Myers for fixing that problem, for doing, for fixing that problem and gotten rid of that. But anyway, I just liked Rob Zombie's just a tad bit. Not by much, just a tad bit more. Mainly because it kind of give you gave you a little bit more insight of maybe Lori. Oh, it seems like Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 was more Michael Myers' story. And then Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 was more on the perspective of Lori Strode's perspective. And, you know, with her trauma of the first movie and this and that. And I liked that a little bit better because even though, for the most part, no fault to their own um, of Scout Taylor Tom Compton, who played Laurie in this movie, she was just doing what she was paid to do and with what she was given. And she, of course, you kind of you do sympathize with her and her friends who were attacked in the for first movie. But at the same time, even though I thought that she did a good job with what she was given, I found her annoying too. Even though I sympathized with her, I found her annoying too. Which you shouldn't find it, the protagonist, annoying. Even though you should feel sympathy for her because of what she went through. But anyways, yeah, I just don't like it that much. So that was number 10. Number 9 is Halloween Ends. I did like this one, but I didn't really like it as much, mainly because of if you've you've seen it, you've seen it, you know what's up. And um, I think I would have liked it a little bit better if maybe it didn't have that four year four year time jump, or at least if it did have some sort of a time jump, maybe not four years, maybe like a year or maybe six months or something so then that way it's still fresh on the mind and whatnot and also if I would have probably liked it a little bit more too if maybe we kind of knew Corey Cunningham's character a little bit more than just the one film just than just like the two hours that we got him maybe if we met him in like near the middle or near the end of Halloween 2018 or like Maybe the beginning of Halloween Kills or something. Like maybe um, he was a friend of um, Allison and her boyfriend. Like maybe they were all classmates together or something. And he, his friend, and maybe Allison and like Allison's boyfriend was fr friends with him. And he heard about it and was like, oh my gosh, are you guys okay? And in that way, maybe he wanted to help. Allison and her boyfriend and he survived Halloween Kills or something and then you know something like that like something and then that way we could have had at least a little bit of a more connection to him instead of meeting him for the first time but I did like the opening scene the opening scene was amazing I thought because even though we met him for the first time and so on and you felt sympathy for him because he accidentally killed that kid. And of course the mom is like so upset and blames him. But anyways, that being said, I did like it. And I think what also killed this movie was the marketing. They marketed it, they marketed it to death that it was Michael and Lori's final battle. If they didn't plug that so hard 
and just say, hey, this is the last time, and then call it that. Instead of like, oh my gosh, it's going to be the whole movie, it's going to be them fighting. But then again, of course it makes sense. You're not going to have them fighting the whole time, and that makes sense, duh, common sense. But at the same time, we weren't really told that we're going to get this new character. And yeah, sure, Corey was in the trailer and such, but we didn't know that he was going to be a big, significant character yet. So anyways, that being said, I think that I think the reason why it got such a bad rap is because of the marketing. Like if they didn't market it so hard to be the last battle. And it was the last battle, so we got to give them credit where credit's due, but just make it a little bit more doable and not um, advertise that too much and so on. And I think that if it was a like I said, if it didn't have a, like that long of a jump, not four years, maybe like six months to a year, two years tops, then it will still kind of be fresh on people's minds. So then that way, maybe then we can get a little bit more of a closure, especially since it was the end of that trilogy. So anyways, I'm going to keep going. I need to stop babbling. The ADHD is coming out on me. So anyway... Number eight is going to be H2O. I liked this movie, especially growing up, because I am a millennial. So this is the type of movie that was like made for me, for my generation. Because it came out around the same time as the original Scream, as well as, you know, Scream 2 and so on. And so I had the same feel of like Scream and The Faculty, Urban Legend, and I Know What You Did Last Summer. So I liked that and that feel of that, but at the same time, I just wished that they didn't have so many different masks. And that was like the number one critique about this movie is the masks. And I still enjoyed it. It's still very entertaining. I liked it. And I am glad though that they brought Lori back. Uh, they brought Lori back. So, and that was great. And you got, a, you know, young Josh Harnett, you know. It's kind of like, you know, bringing in Paul for um, Curse. So anyways, I just thought it was good. That's why it's pretty much in the middle ground here. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, mind-blowing or anything like that, but it was still decent. So number seven is going to be uh, Halloween 5. And you're thinking, what? You have Halloween 5 above H2O? And I might switch that to think of it. I'm not 100% sure, but... Growing up, I watched Halloween 5 more than I watched H2O. So I think that's why I have that there. It's just because between renting the um, Halloweens at the video rental store and just watching them on cable when they were airing on cable and stuff, I watched H Halloween 5 was um, one that I that was always on or always had a copy of at the video rental store. So it was one of the few that I was able to continuously watch, whether on cable or at the video rental store. So just even though I wasn't the best out of the two, of uh, four and five, it definitely, I still liked it. I enjoyed it. And a lot of people give it crap because I'll, it's like the beginning or at least in the middle ground of Curse of Thorn. And whatnot, and yes, I agree with that. I didn't really like the whole Curse of Thorn, like I said, from Curse. But anyway, I liked it enough, and I didn't like that they, you know, killed off. They did a freaking um, resurrection thing where they killed Rachel, Jamie Lloyd's, you know, adoptive sister right away, like early on. And I'm like, Ugh. and then um, people will give it crap also because of Tina. A lot of it seems like Tina gets a lot of hate, but then at the same time, I see that Tina gets a lot of love too. Like, I don't mind her character. I actually loved Tina's character. Yeah, she could be annoying at times, like that annoying friend that doesn't get the picture to leave. Kind of, I think that's me. But anyway, um, I actually like Tina a lot. She was another Rachel in a sense, but just a an annoying Rachel. Um, and she, you know, gave her life to, for Jamie to save Jamie's life. And so that's another reason why I liked her. 
And so anyways, I liked it. It was a good movie. And it's pretty much middle ground too. So there you go. So number six is going to be Season of the Witch. Halloween Season of the Witch. A lot of people don't necessarily like putting this in the Halloween franchise. Mainly because it doesn't have Michael Myers. Yes, it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. But it still was written or named Halloween Season of the Witch. Um, I like this one actually a lot. Again, this was one along with five as one that I would watch always on like cable or rent it from the video store and stuff. And I liked it even when I was a kid. I liked it like a lot. I had a lot. I heard a lot of people say they hate hated it when they were younger when they first watched it when it was you know back in their childhoods because it didn't have Michael Myers in it and this and that. I always liked it even from a young age, like when I was a kid. Um, mainly because um, it was a Halloween movie technically, like not like a Halloween Mike Myers movie, but like it was a spooky, you know, Halloween season movie. And I liked the masks for the witch, the skull, and the pumpkin. Like I thought they looked amazing. I think that's another reason why I liked it so much is because of the masks. And just having that kind of scary thought that something like that mask can like kill you like it was just oh, I thought it was good and I may bring that down to a little higher on my list I don't know maybe in the top five at some point but I liked it and it's a good Halloween movie slash non Halloween movie like you could put this in the franchise and you could take it out it's it's good on its own because it is on its own and so now we're going into top five. So my fifth movie that I like that I'm ranking is Halloween 2018. The first of the new trilogy. I liked this one because I thought it was a good follow up to the original. Yes, it doesn't go with Carpenter's Halloween 2, but I thought it was a decent like continuation from the original. And I liked that they took out the whole Michael Myers and Laurie being siblings. I thought that was kind of stupid. But um, nowhere in the original, I know we are all fans of the original. So if you are a fan of the original, you should know or at least, like at least know that in the original, there is nowhere, nowhere at all in the original implying or no one said it wasn't implied that they were siblings there's nowhere in the original that implied that they were siblings the only reason that they um when i say they i mean Lori and tommy were targeted was because Lori was dropping off keys to the house simply because Lori's dad asked her to not because he had this pulling desire and knew right away that they were siblings. Like, no. It just happened to be that she was in the wrong, uh, wrong place, wrong time. Simple as that. And, like, she was, like, the first, like, and I know that people are going to say, but he stole the mask. There was other people in there, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't they go after him? Why didn't he go after them? Blah, blah, blah. But that being said, were those people at the store that he stole the mask from at his house? No. Lori was. Tommy was. So anyways, I'm getting a little too into it and I'm getting a little heated. I'm sorry. But I liked um, 2018 because I liked the fact that, you know, Lori wasn't going to just sit around River and just be like, oh my gosh, she's going to come for me, blah, blah, blah. She was prepared, and I liked that a lot. And, and she was prepared in, like, H2O, which is great. She changed her name. She moved away, blah, blah, blah. And anyways, um, I like 2018 also because it just felt definitely like a Halloween. Like, if, like the, sim, the, the cinematography was amazing. Like, it was almost equal to the original. Like, it was good. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm going to say about that. But anyway, my next one, my number four, is going to be John Carpenter's Halloween 2 from 1981. And this is a direct sequel to the original, of course. And like I just said with 2018, I didn't like the uh, that I liked that they took the 
kid, the brother and sister aspect away. But this one, that's kind of where it's introduced that they are siblings. But if you, this is like kind of like a little known factor if you ha didn't hear this. But John Comforter, he had, he wanted to just, he just, everyone kind of knows that John Carpenter just wanted to do one movie and done. Like, he didn't want to have a sequel to the original Halloween. He was like a one and done. He didn't want to do a sequel, but he was contracted to do another one. Like, he legally had to. So, he wanted to go and do The Fog. So, what he did, okay, um, the studio was like, okay, you do The Fog, but you have to write and direct in order for us to allow you to do the fog, you have to write and direct Halloween too. And so he's like, oh, fine, fine, fine. And so apparently he was also drunk when he wrote the script for this movie. So that he was like, okay, what am I going to write? I don't know what I write. So he just added in that they were siblings just because he's like, oh, okay, I just don't, I'm just going to put shit to the fan and see what sticks, you know? And, and that's pretty much what happened with this one. And it's still a good movie. I really enjoyed it, even though I didn't like that aspect of them being siblings. Um, you could say, and I'll, to kind of go back a little bit, I think a lot of people will probably say, maybe he just kind of had that connection and that pull to make him feel like, yeah, they're siblings. But yeah, sure, whatever. Whatever floats your boat and teach your horn. And I'm not saying that we have to be told or spoon-fed that. You know, it doesn't need to be implied that they just are. Like, that's kind of stupid. Do you hear yourself when you say that? Like, you don't, yeah, anyway. Um, but I do like the kills in it. I do like the masks, especially after she shoots him in the eyes. Oh my gosh, the blood drip. Oh, it's just, it's just a good movie. Like, it's a good, like, a good sequel to the point that if you were to, and I will sometimes just watch the original and Halloween 2 and have it be just a big, long beautiful long movie and be done and I won't even worry about the rest of the franchise and watch anymore but anyways I just loved it um just just something that you just like about it and then just go for it and so number three is going to be Halloween Kills and I know a lot of people have been like what you like Halloween Kills a little bit more than Halloween 2018 come on I like I said I do like Halloween 2018 but there's just something entertaining and like just good about Halloween Kills. I can't, again, I think it's the cinematography, like the cinematography, the kills, like he was like brutal in this movie, especially like at the beginning with the firemen, like, oh my gosh, so good. And I actually loved Little John and Big John in this movie. Like they're probably my favorite, like one and done characters. Like what I mean by one and done was like, they're only in that one film and they die. But anyway, I loved their little game and I loved them just kind of like, who's here, you know, getting around. And I did like how um, Allison's boyfriend kind of changed, kind of similar to Halloween 4 with Rachel and her boyfriend, you know, because it that kind of have a sim, if you really think about it, it's similar to that in the sense that, um, Rachel's boyfriend was kind of a dick at the beginning of Halloween 4 and um, he kind of cheated on her and stuff and then same thing with this one with um, Halloween ha Halloween 2018 slash Halloween Kills he Allison's boyfriend I can't remember his name at the top of my head um, but Allison's boyfriend was like trying to get himself back in good graces and say I'm sorry I didn't mean to blah 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 and sacrifice himself as well and so it's just a good entertaining movie and I'm actually sad that they killed Karen off at uh, Laurie's daughter and at the end I wish that because I love the actors who played the mom who played Karen she's one of my favorite actresses because she's been around for a long time and it's been a lot of my favorite movies but um I just like the entertainment value of and of this movie like <laughs> the flashback Oh my gosh like the flashbacks were so amazing like like I said the cinematography the cinematography and how they pretty much did their best with like doing special like the special effects is mainly just um, practical they tried their best to just have it be practical effects 
you know, with, um, um, especially with the flashbacks with Loomis, like, oh my gosh, they had somebody who looked exactly like him and they did makeup to make him even look more, even more like him. Like it was practical effects, like, oh my gosh. And the cinematography was great. And what I liked about 2018, kind of going back, back a little bit, is that they just did this great thing of, actually, I'm going to stop that. I can't remember. So, hmm. ADHD for ya. But anyways, um, I loved Kills. Um, and so my number two is going to be Halloween 4. I know. I know a lot of people are going to be like, what Halloween for seriously? I just love this movie. I think it's mainly nostalgia for me. Like it's all nostalgia for me. Cause like I've been seeing this whole video, like Halloween four, five, and even like season the witch and the original, those are like the ones that were always available to watch at the video rental store or was always on what cable, for example, like, with AMC and AMC Fairfest every year, it seems like they had those ones continuously on rotation. Like, they didn't really uh, put on um, Curse that much. They didn't really put on H2O that much. They didn't put on Resurrection that much. It was mainly, I'm sorry about the beeping. My phones weren't going off. But um, they didn't put on, like, Curse or Resurrection that much. And they didn't put on H2O that much. It was mainly those four. But... I just love this movie. Like, I love Danielle Harris in this movie. Like, she was just, like, a good addition to this franchise. And I know she was in both Rob Zombie's Halloween, and I thought that she did a good job with that, too. But I think that, and I wish that if there's other stuff in the works for Halloween, whether it's a TV show or another movie, I just hope that they bring her back again. Because she is one of my favorite actresses as well. Just growing up with her in these movies as well as um, a couple of other movies. I loved watching her and growing up. Another one that I really liked her in was um, Wish Upon a Star, which was also filmed here in Utah. Um, and if you didn't know, Halloween 4 and 5 was actually filmed here in Utah. So, and I'm sure some of you already know that because if you're avid fans of the franchise, you probably have already come to Utah and filmed the locations for this but anyway um wish upon a star was a good movie it was when she was older probably in her mid to late teens and it was one that she did with katherine heigl and um it basically was like it's basically like a freaky friday but with your sibling like you switch bodies with your that's the fastest way to describe it it was a freaky friday movie but you switched bodies with your sister so anyway I just thought that was a good one and that came out in like I would say probably 97 98 something like that so around my era you know and so of course number one is going to be the original yeah. and there's not much to say about the original because we all know that the original is amazing and that's what I like about the original that it's also such a good movie that it's you don't need to necessarily need a sequel to it. My go-to way of watching these is either just watching the original by itself or watching it with Halloween 2, 1981, and have it just be one long movie. And anyway, um, I do like them all and in some capacity. I think that they're all entertaining to an extent but anyways um i hope that you like this one this video um you don't have to necessarily like comment or comment or subscribe but please do and uh, maybe comment down below what you think of my ranking show me your ranking whichever so yeah i hope you have a good day thanks